Hi there YouTube, John McCann here and I'm going to talk to you about Android N Beta. I've had the software from Google on my Nexus 6P for about a week now, so I'm going to give you some feedback, tell you what's going on, show you some tips and tricks and you know my general feelings about what it's like and whether it's going to be a decent upgrade come later this year when it will start landing on phones. So jumping into Android N and it looks well pretty much the same as Marshmallow. Aesthetically, Google hasn't done too much here. It's more sort of smaller nuanced features. If you slide down from the top of the screen, instead of having to slide all the way down to drag out the big quick settings menu, you get a shorter row of quick settings, which makes it really easy to turn on and off your Wi-Fi, and you can change these around. If you want the full complement, you slide down again to get the wider selection. And from here, you can hit the edit button, which hopefully Google will make a little bit easier and nicer to look at than just edit in brackets. But of course, this is the beta software, so things will change come the final, but you can press edit, and there are some extra quick settings that you can add. Uh, you can also remove, you can reorder, and just get it looking how you want it. The first five quick settings are the five that appear in the super little bar at the top if you just do a quick little swipe down. Uh, and that's one of the new features for Beta. Heading around the handset, it's still pretty smooth. It's obviously the hardware is still the same on the 6P. It doesn't feel overly nippy and that's probably because the software isn't optimized as this isn't a final build of the platform. I have used quicker and slicker builds of Android so hopefully the final version will be a bit quicker. Something else I have found is battery life isn't particularly good. I'm struggling to see it a whole day at the moment with relatively moderate usage. Again, I reckon that is down to the non-final build quality of this phone. There's nothing, there's no one thing majorly playing with my battery here uh, but the Android OS, the Android system, uh, phone idle and screen are all sort of the key components to that battery drain and you can expect the improvements with those will improve the battery life as we go. I mean we've just lost 2% there, 61 to 59, so it does drop, you know, relatively rapidly. I do have screen brightness on full for this video though, so you can see what's going on, so that will have something to do with it as well. You now have a couple of settings suggestions at the top of the settings bar. I haven't actually been able to remove these yet, but you can minimize them by pressing the little arrow, allowing you to jump to key things like adding more email addresses or setting up voice searches and actions, allowing you to use your phone in different ways and hopefully make things a bit quicker. Uh, two cool new features which I haven't actually used that much because I don't find myself needing to, but for some people these are gonna be really big. First up is two apps on the same screen. You, we've seen this from the likes of Samsung's on their Note series phones in the past, but now Google is making it a stock feature in Android should people wish to use it. All you have to do is open up an app, hold down on your recent button, and then you have the choice to open up other apps on the other half of the screen. Now, the second app has to already be running in the background. You won't be able to pick from all your rows of apps, which is a little bit annoying. Having to open up two apps separately and then come out of them and then open up one and then go into the other to get the dual screen. But you know, it, it does work. You can tap maps and there you are. I've got maps and I've got my Twitter feed all side by side. It's all very nice. Now, dual screen doesn't work with all the apps. Now, part of that will be down to coding and some apps will need to be updated to support this feature, but it's not clear whether everything will be supported um, with split screen in the future. For example, we did get a flash up here saying this app might not be supported and you can see Raffler for example isn't displaying correctly here but you can change the size of both halves by sliding up and stuff will resize and slide up to the top or the bottom to spring one of the apps into action. Another nice feature in the Android M beta is the quick return to the previous app. You just need to double tap your recent button and you'll spring back to the app you were in previously. So a really nice feature if you're working between two apps, especially on a phone screen where the side by side doesn't really work so well because you haven't got lots of screen real estate. So I find myself using the double tap to skip between two apps really quickly, um, which is a nice feature. Again though, I don't tend to find myself switching between apps too often. Sometimes if I'm playing a game and I get a message, I'll skip out and skip back in. So that does help. But another nice feature of Android N leads me on nicely is when you get a message, you can reply to any message, be it WhatsApp, text message, anything like that from the notification bar. When you get the notification, it will come up. There'll be a little gray box like the option box here. Instead, it will be type of reply. You can tap that, keyboard will display, tap out your message, send, and all while on top of the app you're currently in. It makes it a lot easier 
it a lot quicker and it's a feature I really like with the Android M beta. So Google will be pushing out further updates for this beta as it continues to fix and add functionality and just improve the optimizations in general. So we will get back to you. Something else I have found is the phone can get a little bit warm from time to time, which is you know not surprising for development software. We've seen this in the past. This is a pretty stable beta though. There are, however, a couple of apps that won't load because of the beta. NFL Mobile is one prime example. You tap the app, it looks like it's loading, but then after a while, it just crashes. And the same happens with BBC Sport as well. I'm getting exactly the same issue. Now, all the other apps on my phone currently work fine, uh, but you will find if you choose to download Android M Beta on a Nexus device that maybe some of your apps won't work, and that is just the nature of the beta. Or obviously, when it comes to Final Build, you can comfortably expect all your apps to work. If not, that's probably going to be more down to the developer than Google itself. If you want to get Android N Beta on your handset, then you'll have to have one of the right phones, Nexus 6P, Nexus 5X, Nexus 9 tablet, Pixel C, all of those will happily take the beta. You'll just need to go to android.com forward slash beta and then sign in with your Google account and then it gives you a little bit of information about the program. It will tell you what devices are available and there you are and then you can enroll your device. It's really easy. It will have to download quite a large file to then install on your phone. Um, and do be aware that if you do do it, you can roll it back, but you will lose data if you do roll back. So you want to back everything up uh, and that uh, it won't work perfectly because this is a beta program. So there you have it. There's my early findings of the Android N beta. If you want me to check out anything else on this beta, let us know in the comments below. Love to hear what you think. If you're using Android N beta, let me know how you're finding it. Is there anything you like, anything you don't like, anything you want to see or Google to add? Tell us what you're really excited about. If you love iOS, tell us. Have a go at the Android guys, you know, screw them, right? Um, but thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that business, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.